pale in comparison to the true stories that, that you've done, that you've accomplished. And I'm really honored to be here amongst all of you who have worked so hard, and I, I know how hard you've worked. Um, probably one question that a lot of you have right off the bat is, uh, geez, what's this guy doing up here? And what's he going to say? And, uh, and I'll tell you, as Valerie had said, um, I spent a lot of years doing a lot of different things um, other than working as an admissions counselor for college and, and working with adult students. And uh, as I worked for the city of Warville, I wore a lot of hats and uh, came in as an engineering technician. But the one thing that I, uh, that I did day in and day out that I really was crazy about was I was a zoning inspector. Yeah, I hear the growl. Um, I was not spreading joy on a daily basis. I was basically going out into the world and telling people what they were doing wrong, uh, what was going to happen if they didn't correct it, and uh, I have nothing to do with this lighting, but, but it's kind of a cool effect. Um, Zoning inspector. <laughs> Anyhow, I decided to make a change in my life. I wasn't really sure what. I knew I wanted to do something that, that would help people. And I had always been closely connected to Wayne College. Um, went to school there right out of high school. And uh, went on to the University of Akron. But I stayed close to Wayne. My, heck, my mom was born there. True story. Um, not enough time for that one tonight. But, uh, but anyhow, when a job opened up to be an admissions counselor for adult students, something which I knew nothing about, uh, I went ahead and, and I applied and uh, wrote a really good letter and had a really good interview and got the job and got the job offer, let's say. But it caused uh, a lot of a lot of thought between my wife and I. Um, having worked in the same place for 15 years, I had a bunch of vacation, I had great benefits, you know, things were going really well. Why am I going to do this? Why am I going to make this change? And uh, we decided, you know, there was a cut and pay too, uh, to make things even more difficult. But, um, you know, Kristen and I are, are both, and I think the, the testament that we're here tonight, uh, we're both passionate about things. You know, I mean, we, we both would, would much rather. <laughs> Time for passion! Um, <laughs> what's going on? You know what? There's got to be somebody. One of my kids is here, I bet, doing this. <laughs> but anyhow, I went ahead and I took the job, and it was kind of crazy. It was kind of crazy starting out because, you know, again, um, I, didn't, I had to learn everything about this stuff. I, I had been through college, but I didn't really know the admissions process. A lot had changed in 20 years. And, uh, and every day, you know, I just went, you know, like, gosh, there's so much to learn. How am I ever going to take care of all this? And I'd get home at the end of the day, and Krista would say, well, how'd things go today? Well, you know, another day I learned a bunch of stuff that I know. Learning how much I don't know. And uh, I had I had I had a fellow walk in one night, and uh, he was the same age as I was. I was about forty back then, I guess. And uh, he had just gotten a CED, and the, the staffers had suggested that he pay a visit to Wayne College, see what it's all about, you know, because maybe he should take the next step. And uh, I said, well, you know, how'd you do? What's your story? He said, well, you know, when I was 16, he said, I, I just, I couldn't get this stuff. You know, I, I fell behind. I couldn't get back on top of it. I'd get ridiculed by classmates. It just, it wasn't working for me, and I'd split. And uh, in, in the ensuing years, he got married. They had several kids. I worked a lot of different jobs, and, and everything ended up being a dead end. He just never felt like he was getting anywhere. So he went back, and he went through the classes, and he took the test. And I said, well, how did you do? And he said, well, I feel like I did pretty good, but I, you know, I don't know. He said, I have my score report here. Um, do you know how to interpret this thing? And I said, yeah, I mean, I'm three weeks on the job. I've never seen one of these things before in my life. And I said, well, no, I don't, but I can, uh, I can find out. And uh, so I excused myself for a couple minutes, and I went and I did some research real quick. And uh, what I found just, just blew me away. Uh, this guy had, um, you know, on the five tests, he had four 800s and a 790. And, uh, and I, I thought, this, this couldn't be right, you know. And I did a little more research and realized that he was in the, the 99th percentile rank, probably the 99.99th percentile rank. He was at the top of the heap 
of, of all graduating seniors in the country, not just, not just people taking the GED test. And, uh, you know, I went back into that room, I had, I had goosebumps, I had goosebumps telling you the story now. I went back into the room and I said to this guy, I said, do you have any idea how well you did on this? And I explained it to him. And he sat there in silence for a minute and uh, kind of started tearing up. And he said, you know what? This changes everything. And I said, you bet it does. And, uh, you know, all of the, all the ridicule and all the hard work and everything that it took to get him to that point, that's the first time anybody had ever ever suggested that he was bright, that he was smart, that he was, that he was worth anything, that he could do anything. And I said, I'm here to tell you, it's not just that you can do something, you can do anything, you know? And uh, I worked with this guy, and uh, um, I got him going on actually an honor scholarship at the University of Akron. And uh, a very bright individual, he's still going to school, uh, just a fantastic story. And everybody's got a story like that. It has to start somewhere. And all of you here tonight that have gotten your GED, this is fantastic. You're at the top of the hill right now. You know, the view's pretty good, isn't it? You know, that, that's the great news. But the, uh, there's a little news on the other side, too, is there's more, more hills coming, you know? And uh, as Valerie mentioned, whenever she introduced me, I'm, I'm a bicycle racer. I've raced bicycles for all of my adult life, 26 years. But one of the most important things that I learned was from another racer who later actually rode with my club when he was young. He later turned pro race with the likes of George Hincap and Lance Armstrong. Everybody knows Lance. But uh, early on, as I was just getting started, you know, I'd struggle to keep up with these guys, and, and it was killing me. And I'd get to the top of the hill at the same time as them, and then I'd get dropped after that. And uh, finally, this guy kind of took me under his wing, and he said, you know what? He said, here's what happens. He said, darn near anybody can make it to the top of the hill given enough time. He said, the, the folks that are good might get there first. He said, but the people that win, that all depends on what they do when they get to the top of the hill. you got to carry your momentum over it, because there's going to be more hills to come. You have momentum right now. You know, when I work with adult students at, uh, at Wayne College, one of the things that often comes, comes up is, you know, geez, I haven't been to school in a long time. You know, oftentimes I'll see someone who's 40, 45 years old and they've been displaced because the factory closed or because they've been laid off. You know, they, they thought that they were going to be able to do what they were doing for good and they were good at it. Um, but now they got to shift gears. they got to go back and do something different. And what I always tell them, and by golly, this is as true as I'm standing here, those folks have a better chance, really, of succeeding academically than a lot of the kids that are coming out of high school and it's because of this. Because of the life lessons that you've learned. You know that you don't get anything unless you work for it. And you've just been through a bunch of work and here you are tonight and, you know, and congratulations. You've gotten what you've worked for, there's more work to do. And, uh, and the harder you work, the better off you're going to be. I mean, this, this GED is the single, probably the single most important thing that that you've accomplished so far, really. But there's more out there to do, and I'm here to tell you, there's people to help you do it. Uh, I know that with the adult students that I recruited at, at Wayne College, one of the greatest things in, in my career so far, all my careers, was this. We had a, a graduation celebration uh, here just a few weeks ago at Wayne College, and the fellow that hired me, my mentor at Wayne College, Gordon Holly, he told me, uh, he said, you feel good about this job right now. This is you know, after I, I told him the story about the fellow from the GED. He said, you feel good now. He said, you wait until you see people going out the door. Wait until you see them at the other end. And uh, I had uh, my first chance to see some of my students graduate. And that was absolutely fantastic. And I'll tell you what, there was another person there too. And she wasn't graduating on that particular night. But uh, this lady... She had uh, come to me, she was 40, her marriage was falling apart, she had three kids, she had, she had uh, uh, graduated from high school and she'd gone on to work in a factory, worked her way up um, into management and, and was doing great. Met a guy, fell in love, he was a college graduate, she stayed home and raised the kids and, and whatnot and uh, 
things had just kind of fallen apart. And she decided to, to get back on her feet and, and think about think about me. You know, think, what am I going to do with the rest of my life? And she came to see me, and, and we worked on a couple of different things. One was this. We have this program at Wayne College. Uh, it's a credit for life experience type program. And it gave her her first opportunity to get back in the classroom and, and get credit for some of the work that she had done previously. And that was huge. It was a huge jump start for her. You know, she aced this thing, and then she went on to take two classes. She was at this graduation recognition ceremony not to graduate that night, but, but to get an award. And uh, she called me the night before, and she said, John, remember me? She said, you know, you, you were the first person I saw when I, when I walked into that school. And you've been very encouraging to me and whatnot. She said, I, I wondered if you're going to be at that program. And I said, yeah, I am. And she said, well, could I sit at your table because, you know, I... I asked my husband, she reconciled with her husband, I asked my husband to go with me. And uh, he said, well, he said, I'll come when you graduate. Because that will be an accomplishment. And I just want you to know that, that no matter what any of us do in life, for some people it's never going to be good enough. You know? And just push those up. You don't need to listen to people like that. You don't need negative people in your life. Look at the things that you can do. Look at what you've done to get here tonight. And keep on moving. Because you can. The award that she was getting that night, by the way, was a special award from the dean because she had a 4.0 as a full-time college student. That's perfect. That's all it is. And uh, by golly, I have a prediction for what's going to happen with her. I think she's going to get her degree, and then she's going to go on to a master's degree, and then she'll probably go on to a PhD. And I don't think her husband will be invited to the graduation. <laughs> Anyhow, um, I, I was given five minutes to talk here tonight, and I have a very poor judge of time. And uh, as Valerie said, I brought my wife along here tonight, and I told, yes, I told Kristen to keep time. Did you keep time? No. See, I've been up here way too long already, I have to imagine. But, like I say, it's a great, great honor. And please, keep that momentum rolling. Know that out there, if you want to take the next step, if you want to move on to college, or any sort of training, anything like that, understand that there are people like me that really, really, really want to help you. I mean, that's, that's, that's what gets me going, and that's what we do. And make sure you look me up. And we'll hang around, you know, if you want to come up and, and talk to me, talk to me about college afterwards. Talk to me about anything. That'll be great. But uh, I'm here for you, and, uh, and I'm proud of you. Thank you for having me tonight. Sure. 
Uh, tonight we have the great honor of presiding over the next portion of our evening's festivities. This is the National Adult Education Honor Society Awards. If our inductees would come up, right there at the bottom, along with the people that you have chosen to pin you, will begin the ceremony. Yes, The National Adult Education Honor Society was founded in 1991 in the spirit of the traditional honor society that you find in high schools. It's the purpose of providing meaningful recognition to outstanding adult education students. As most of us know, and as we have so eloquently heard tonight from so many folks, being an adult education student is not always easy. School attendance, regular dedicated attendance in class, and finding time to study, working it into your real life is not a picnic. Concerns, health, jobs, health issues, transportation, all kind of get in the way from time to time. Tonight we're going to recognize six students who represent what the National Adult Education Honor Society acknowledges as the best that we have to offer. Selection criteria for these students in the, include dedicated attendance, dependability, a cooperative attitude, and an innovative and positive work ethic. All of our recipients were nominated by the respective instructors, and it should be noted that less than 5% of all adult education students nationally received this award. To our inductees who have demonstrated perseverance, a personal commitment to follow through on the promise that you made to yourselves to finish your high school education. And you exemplified all of us what it means to struggle, to endure, and to succeed when you put your mind to it. Each of our honorees today will receive a certificate of membership, two letters of recommendation, one for post-secondary financial aid as well as for employment, and they will receive a lifetime membership in the National Law Education Society. And now to our honorees.
How's that working out for you? Pretty good. 1.9 million video views. <laughs>